Hola, me llamo Jaliz, bienvenido a mi canal uh, y yo soy de San Antonio, Texas and that's about the extent of my Spanish. Um, I'm trying to learn Spanish, y'all. I'm Halise, endeavoring to persevere as always. If you're new here, I make videos about my chaotic good life. Subscribe, follow social media, all of that fun stuff. So something that has been on my bucket list, my to-do, if you will, since like a smooth 2015, is to actually learn how to communicate in Spanish. And I'm saying learn to communicate versus just learn. Spanish because I've actually already learned Spanish. I took three years of Spanish when I was in high school. It was a requirement here in San Antonio with the high school I went to to graduate. I am coming into this with some knowledge, but I wanna stress that having vocabulary is not the same as communicating effectively. And I wanna try to explore that in this video. I definitely can, I can get myself out of trouble, you know, Puedo ir al baño, por favor, and other such things, 210 por vida, and so on and so forth. But I can't sit down and actually have a conversation with a native Spanish speaker. I can communicate my immediate needs, but I can't talk about what's happening in their life or how they're doing or just day-to-day -day interactions in the same way that I would communicate with y'all here in a video. In this video, I want to try to explore that using the Nathaniel Drew method. I'm calling it that, even though he, he ain't the first person to learn a language like come on. And over the last, I wanna say year and a half, two years, he's put out a few videos highlighting his method to learn a new language. I wanna to try to take some of his methodology around learning a language and see if I can apply it to myself to try to learn Spanish. I just feel like in my heart of hearts, this is something I should have been done, learned how to do, um, but I'm late, what are you gonna do? Pareto said that 80% of your outcome comes from 20% of your output. So basically, to put this into context of learning a language, really you only need to learn about 20% of the words to actually be 80% fluent. You just need to learn the first 1,000, 2,000-ish so common words and you'll be good. You'll more or less know how to communicate effectively. Even as I speak to you in English right now, it's not that I'm using absurdly difficult words or anything like that to communicate effectively with you. A prime example of that in English would be for me to use the word loquacious to you, which is a fun word, not gonna lie, super fun to say, but at the end of the day, I actually have not communicated with you effectively if you don't know what loquacious means, <laughs> which means that you just talk a lot. You know what I'm saying? So it's better for me to just say to you, hey, you're talking a lot, stop, than to say, your loquaciousness is befuddling me. That helps no one. No one's helped with that statement. So I started looking up other techniques and ideas around learning languages, including one from Johnny Harris and Nathaniel Drew. They put out a four hour class on how to learn languages, giving guides on where to start and how to overcome different hurdles you'll probably face throughout the journey. This helped me to put together a firmer methodology that would be sustainable for me. If you're interested to check out the class, I'll link it down below in the description box. So something I've been trying to do is really hone in on my motivation for wanting to learn Spanish. I had already been trying to learn Spanish last year in 2020, and my motivation, I realized, just was not strong enough at all. My original motivation for learning Spanish was I wanted to be able to communicate with my extended family. Um, part of that is because of proximity. They just, they don't live here in San Antonio where I'm at. Um, and so I don't actually get a lot of communication with them consistently and regularly. So trying to communicate, wanting to communicate with them effectively, while it is something I actually wanna do, isn't a strong enough motivation to know that I'm gonna be putting in this much time and this much effort into something that Realistically, um, I see them about two or three times a year. So 
it's just not enough. And um, this is actually something else that I learned from Nathaniel Drew and um, Johnny is that your motivation is everything. It's, it's what's gonna keep you going through all of this. My motivation, I'm gonna share it with you now. I definitely wrote it down um, in my Notability app, which is what I use. I love using Notability, it's my favorite thing. Here it is, all of my notes for learning. I wanna be able to express myself in another language. I want to hear and tell stories that can reach beyond an English audience. I want to experience other cultures outside of my own to better understand my place in the world and also increase my cultural competency. I know that speaking languages can increase my opportunities for travel. The world is vast and this is the first step to existing truly in its vastness. All of that obviously sounds super abstract, you know, semi-hokey a little bit, but it's true. And then the next thing I did was I put down my dream for learning Spanish, like what I would love to manifest out of learning the language. To be able to exist in Central South Texas and language is not my barrier anymore with native descendants. My dream is to live abroad in South America or slow travel through Mexico and be on tropical, beautiful spaces and understand everything completely or to work with an organization like If Not Us Then Who and lend my storytelling skills to the indigenous populations because again, the language is there. Finally, going to Spain or France and slow traveling or living there with no mental fatigue at all because I've worked hard to build this existence for myself. I have future proofed myself. My big dream for learning Spanish is to be able to tell stories and communicate effectively in this other language. Um, I got a taste of what this could potentially be like in back in 2018. Uh, I was working on a project with another YouTuber and while there, we got to speak to a lot of indigenous people around climate change. Working on that project, a lot of the indigenous peoples, yes, they are speaking colonized languages as well, but a lot of them were speaking a lot of the romantic languages. A lot of them spoke French, Portuguese, and Spanish. And yes, they had translators there the whole time, but for me as a documentarian, just really feeling, truly, truly feeling that language barrier and really being annoyed with it. Really wanting to sit down and build conversation with these people um, so I could help to tell their story as authentically as possible and true to them as possible and knowing that I could never quite do that. I always needed a translator with me to communicate effectively and that really really bothered me. That is the strongest why for me, being able to communicate effectively and express myself in another language. That is what's going to keep me going through this um, when I get bogged down into the details, into the minutia of trying to learn. Now, I've established this sort of pie in the sky, super abstract goal that I want to reach. Um, speak Spanish fluently, quote unquote. and. This is something that I'm kind of learning to do, not only with learning to speak another language effectively, but also just for life in general. I find it's best to have these sort of abstract goals of, I wanna to learn to speak another language. And then out of that big sort of goal, pie in the sky thing you have, you begin to sort of break down and define things for yourself. This is something that I've done in my accountability group with Evelyn that I've been in for, oh my gosh, four years, five years now, Jesus. Um, we will establish goals, big abstract goals for ourselves at the beginning of the year or mid year. And then from there each month, it's what are the tangible things I can do to achieve this pie in the sky goal. So in my first attempt to learn Spanish last year, I, for some reason, didn't do that and was just like, I'm gonna learn Spanish and had no plan of how to make it happen for myself. I was just kind of bumbling through, trying things, you know, whatever. I wanna show you this time around what I've done. I've created what I'm calling a tactical goal of how to learn Spanish. And part of this was doing some research on language learning, what are the different methodologies and how can I maybe incorporate them into things that I already know from, you know, going to school or um, studying in college, things like that. Things that I know that help me with memorizations of vocabulary and conjugations and things like that. So, I first thing I did was I figured out when I say 
speak another language or be fluent in another language, the first thing I did for myself was define fluency. Learning languages, this is nothing new. A lot of people have learned them. It's been studied how people learn them. There's a ton of research out there. And so I ended up coming across the CEF, CEFR, which is the Common European Framework of Reference for Languages. And on there, they have defined the different levels of language proficiency. And so I figured out by looking at those definitions that I actually want to be, what I want to do is called being B2, B2 proficient in the CEFR rating. And the B2 proficiency, I'll kind of read it for you. You can understand the main ideas of complex text on both concrete and abstract topics, including technical discussions in his or her field of specialization. This would be relevant for me because my motivation is to be able to tell stories and film documentaries, et cetera, in another language. So I would need to potentially communicate on ideas around cameras, lenses, et cetera. Can interact with a degree of fluency and spontaneity that makes regular interaction with native speakers quite possible without strain for either party. That's the other thing. I don't necessarily want to feel like it's hard for me to think of the words to say to someone or they're having trouble actually understanding what I'm saying because my Spanish is potentially so broken. After I actually defined what I mean when I say be fluent in Spanish by this B2 and level three that I've figured out, then I started doing research. Okay, generally speaking, how long does it take someone to get to that level of proficiency? And I found that it takes anywhere from 500 to 600 hours total in study of a language to get to that level of proficiency. Obviously, it's going to depend on your level of comprehension. Is this the first level you're learning? So I went ahead and calculated, okay, maybe it'll take me a little bit on the lower end of the 500 to 600 hours. I'm guesstimated it was about 500 hours to learn Spanish for me. And from there, now that I had realized, okay, it's gonna take me about 500 hours to get to the level of proficiency that I want to be at, how do I break this up, all right? So I started doing more research again and looking into this idea of potential schedules and how to fit this more into my life. And on the one hand, I saw people where all they did was learn the language. They were learning it for six to 10 hours a day, and yeah, they were able to learn the language very fast, you know, within 30 days, 40 days, they actually had a really decent grasp of communicating and expressing themselves well in a language. Um, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know the life that y'all live, but I don't have six hours a day to dedicate to learning Spanish. Uh, I do still have to make videos. I still have to make a living. I am a video producer. But I did think to myself, well, I think there are a few days a week when I, when I could really commit to maybe four hours for the day or five hours for the day and do that maybe five days a week, you know? They don't all have to be during the week. Some of it can be over the weekend. After all, I am really committed to trying to learn this as fast as possible. So I calculated that if I did four hours a day for five days in a week, that would take me about 25 weeks to get to the level of proficiency that I want. So I would be at the level of proficiency that I want by roughly July or August of 2021. Not bad. Obviously along the way, I am also getting more and more proficient. So even if I don't hit the B2 by July or August, I know way more Spanish than I would have if I had just kept going at the rate I was going, which was like, I don't know, an hour here or there. No real schedule built in. And we'll see how this goes. Um, I, we're, as of the time of filming this video, we're in about the middle of January, and I have just kind of figured out breaking down this abstract idea of learning Spanish and putting it into this sort of, okay, what does that look like? What is, how do I take the abstract and turn it into the day-to-day -day grind, here's how I do that, and make it a tangible thing that happens? I've just sort of figured that out. So now I'm in the process of implementing it. And am I gonna stumble along the way? Yes. Will there definitely be weeks where I don't hit my four hours for the day, five days of the week? Yes. But in the end, will I have gotten, by July or August, ideally, will I know more Spanish than I do now? Obviously.
All right, so before we get too far into me speaking Spanish to you now, a word from our sponsor, Storyblocks. Storyblocks is an online stock footage site with over a million royalty-free assets that you can use with unlimited downloads. If you are a full-time creative like me, or maybe you work with clients, Storyblocks can be a really great asset to up your overall creative career game. If you're interested, check them out at storyblocks.com slash Halise. I personally enjoy using them because they have this program called Restock, where they're actively trying to put more BIPOC in stock footage and also more people that are of the LGBTQI spectrum. They're trying to include them more in stock footage so that way you can normalize the fact that we all exist and we do things and we should be in stock footage. Again, you can check them out at storyblocks.com slash Halise. They have different tiers to work with any budget. Hola, me llamo Halise. Uh, tengo 30 años y yo soy negro. Está muy difícil, uh, um, porque pensar en español es muy difícil. Yo soy de San Antonio, Texas, de los Estados Unidos. Y tengo una perra, uh, se llama Dakota, pero se llama Pucci. Me gusta hacer videos para mi canal de YouTube. Me gusta hacer cuentos para mi canal de mi vida. Mi vida, mi vida como una esposa. Una hija, una persona. No, no pienso algo a hablar. Hay muchos plantos, plantas, plantas. Probably plantas, sí. Hay muchos plantas de mi apartamento. Me gusta los, las plantas porque es bonita, ¿no? Finito, Jalis, finito. En los comentarios, en los comentarios, Dime acerca de tu día y, y, si, y si es, y si, y si habla español, uh, tell me if I'm bad. <laughs> And with that, I'm Halise, endeavoring to persevere. As always, if you made it this far in the video, hi, consider subscribing a mi canal. I'd appreciate it. And I will see you when I see you. Yo soy negity, 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 negro. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I hope I don't get flagged for that. Um, <laughs> but it's a true statement.